All right, welcome to Craig's Garage. We're working on TA-2962 with my main helper, Nick Kutsona, and me, Craig. So, the whole challenge on this car is that we broke the drive shaft that uh, powers the supercharger. So this little guy goes through that hole, mounts to the, the pulley on the crank, and it comes through and, and drives the supercharger. For context, here's a view of the supercharger installed before I ripped everything apart. And there is the broken drive shaft. And because I had not designed it properly, we had a fracture right here. Just I've actually got it shorter now, but right where it came out of this, this uh, keyless shaft bushing in the crankshaft, it was flexing and it work hardened and eventually broke right off. So it turns out you have to have two universal joints because these universal joints don't account for a parallel misalignment, only an angular misalignment. So our task today is we're going to put a new U-joint in this thing. And in order to do that, this hole has to be bigger because we need two and a quarter inch clearance. So we're going to do a little surgery on this thing and we're going to cut it off at the indicated marks here with an angle grinder with a thin disc on it. And then we will carefully measure. I've already got the measurement from one side to the other. And by keeping the engine in place and the supercharger bracket in place and this uh, front leaf spring crossbar in place, we should be able to keep our chassis dimensions. So this is our setup to reduce sparking. We've got our fuel lines capped, taped, and foiled. So hopefully nothing goes into places that get, get expensive. Our fix for this opening is going to be this guy. So it's about two and seven eighths, two and three quarter inside diameter. So that gives us some, some room. We're going to insert this where this old piece was welded in position. That'll give us tons of clearance for our new uh, supercharger U-joint there. The other thing we have to be careful of is the radiator comes across here. So anything that extends beyond this height has to be back further. Otherwise we're not gonna clear. So we're gonna make a provision for that too. So, on with the surgery. The operating room has been prepared. I should point out that all this aluminum foil helps protect some of the painted surfaces from the sparks caused by the angle grinder with the cutoff wheel. Uh, most of them went straight down to the floor, but I didn't want any wayward sparks to embed themselves in the painted surfaces. Okay, we're part way through the surgery. We've cut out the chassis tube either side Right there and right there are the ends of the original chassis tube. We've put in this new piece here and we discovered the engine's actually sitting low on the stand. So we've measured this piece to be centered with the center line of the chassis tube rather than the engine because we're at some point we'll have to prop this engine up a little bit. But at the moment we're not going to change anything because it lines up with these supercharger mounts. So we've also measured the distance between here and here to make sure we have enough allowance for the, the uh, universal joint that's going to go in there. Okay, we're back. It's been a few days, maybe even a week. Got some of the things hooked up here and checked. So there's our new drive shaft on the universal joint. It's got plenty of range of motion and we're still aligned on center with the supercharger because I never moved these brackets. So it should have very little play, except when the chassis flexes or the engine moves over. So in the process of welding in this new surround, right, well, let me get a hand under there. This, this guy here, we ended up straightening out this cross member. So the big shim that was required to correct the factory misalignment on this mount is no longer needed. It turns out I needed a tiny one on this side now. So um, once I did that, all the bonnet gaps aligned nicely. So it could be differences in the rubber mountings because one of them under the radiator was squashed on the other side. Um, so it's hard to say. But anyway, you just shim it until it looks right. And so that's what we did here. So I've hooked up the radiator hoses and there's a little trick where you smear a little bit of gasket sealer on those hoses and then tighten up the clamps. And they don't have to be super, super tight because that gasket maker will make up for some of those little irregularities in the surfaces. 
So I've got that done. Um, the supercharger is just about ready to go back on its mounts. So I'll get my array of fasteners and we'll do that. I measured the offsets from the supercharger mount here to the nose of the, of the uh, universal joint. So basically the dimension from there to here. And then calculated how long does this have to be in order to get enough purchase in here in the keyway and enough splines on the outside to engage. So then yesterday uh, we milled, Carl Klontz helped me mill um, keyways. I can find a little pointer here. Let's get in real close. There's the keyway there. So that provides engagement there. And then it's the same thing on the other side. And the, there's a keyless shaft bushing that goes into the crank pulley right there. So there's the other end of that universal joint. And right in here is a keyless shaft bushing. It's basically a, a wedge inside of a wedge. And as you tighten the little bolts, those wedges push against one another and they tighten against the outside diameter that engages here, and they tighten against the inside diameter that engages in the shaft that goes in, in the center. So I set that up and torqued that correctly, then put on the universal joint. So we're building that shaft toward the front of the car. Checked all the fasteners. I think everything's tight. Uh, yesterday I put some gasket sealer, just a thin little bit on the radiator fittings assembled those, fitted the clamps, and then double checked them today. So we should be fairly watertight in the cooling system. So um, I checked the clearances underneath. I've done all the checking I can do. So let's see if this thing will start. First thing I want to do is a pre-flight. Let's bring you in close so we can, I'll walk you through this. So see, we got the supercharger. There's an oil reservoir here and there's a sight glass and we're looking for an oil level on that sight glass. And you can just barely see it. It's right about there, we're about halfway up, which is appropriate because the fill line and the plug is, is about halfway up. So that's good. Let's make sure we've got some dash pot oil. I'm gonna add a little bit just because. I'll go over to our dash pot oil supply. And I'm using pretty thick stuff in this dash pot. See, using Volumex input side and HV8 carb. So this is this is pretty heavy stuff. This is 80W90. And the reason I'm using heavy stuff is because I'm trying to limit the speed of the piston rise in this carburetor. Through experimentation, I found that heavier oil was necessary in this application. So let's just make sure we got something going on in there. It doesn't take a ton. I can see there's a level there, so that's gonna be good enough. We'll put that on. Let's double check that our carb linkage is set up right. So I've got a return spring there. I've got a second one there. We've got two independent means of connecting to this shaft and the throttle linkage is connected. And then I've got a little cotter pin there to keep that in place. So, our fuel line is connected, so before we fire up, we'll turn the fuel pump on to make sure that we've got pressure and no leaks. So let's just double check. We know we've got fuel, but uh, it doesn't hurt to check. Yeah, full tank of fuel. I use uh, non-ethanol because I don't want bad things to happen. Let's go to the boot. This is a nice feature. We can just lift this cone up. There is one of our sediment bowl filters. Those are nice and clear. Everything looks secure here. Fire system's in place. Safety pin is out. So if we catch fire, we can pull that and at least get away with our lives. So let's cinch this guy up. Tie like that. Same thing with this side. Okay, make sure there's no tools or debris under the car. We're looking clean there. Okay, let's power up that fuel pump. So we're gonna turn on ignition. We're gonna select fuel pump one, fuel pump one. 
you can hear it run. See the amp meter going. So let's go forward. Make sure we don't have any leakage going on here at the float bowl. Looks good to me, not overflowing. All right, I'm gonna put you back on the stand. Let's fire this thing up. It's gonna take a few tries because it's cold. The car is cold anyway. So we've got a, we've got a long tube that we have to pull air fuel mix through in order to start making combustion. So it'll take a few, a few start cycles. It'll cough and choke and then eventually it will start. Disconnect our battery charger and you put the car on like a glove. Here we go. Okay, neutral. All right, handbrake on. You're gonna need a little bit of choke. Check the blower, make sure we're spinning free. Nothing seems to be flailing around under there. We're looking at that orange bellows and I don't see it rubbing or, or sticking out or doing anything it's not supposed to do. Let's double check that we're not dripping fuel. That's looking good. Let's check our coolant. Make sure we're not oozing or leaking. The one little leak I saw this morning right here has stopped because I tightened it up. Belt's running clean. Okay. So far, so good. Yeah. All right. We'll wait till we get some heat in this motor. Good oil pressure. Let's step inside for a second. I'm gonna do this one-handed. Oh yeah. Yeah, the blower's the blower's doing its job, so oh, we need to we need to set this clock. Come on. Wind this guy up. This is our eight day aircraft clock. We gotta run a tight ship here. Can't have any miscalibrated instrumentation. We got enough to worry about. Okay. 
go for a drive here. Just a quick drive around the block. Car is cooling down. You can still feel the heat from the exhaust. And we had a successful test drive. The only thing I found wrong so far is that I wired the fan backwards, so I had to go switch the terminals. It was pushing air out of the front versus sucking air in, which is what we really want. We want to pull the air through and push it out through the louvers. So the way I tested it, I just took a, a towel and put it near the fan and, and it was going that way, which is a good indicator of which way it's blowing. So I got that corrected. And uh, other than that, it feels really good. The gearbox is pretty close to adjustment. I still got a little bit more to do in first gear. I think I've, but it's very close. It's within about a quarter turn on the adjuster. Um, and I can tell just from driving it, um, you can feel the difference on that. So I'll go in at some point and do that, but that's not urgent. It's, it's, very drivable. So we finally got some oil temperature there. You can see the radiator. It's a little higher than it was with the fan on because uh, it's sitting now um, and the fan's not blowing through. But everything else looked really good. We had a great drive. Katie shot some video. So I'll compile all this and uh, post it so you guys can see a little bit of the drive too. So anyway, thanks for watching. TA 2962 out. If you're into this kind of stuff, be sure to support me. All you have to do is hit like and subscribe. Maybe leave some comments. That lets YouTube know that you're interested and it keeps that up on your feed. So I appreciate the support.